pressure. It can mean a lot of things, but in states like Michigan, it means more than most. According to Merriam's Dictionary, pressure is defined as the weight or force that is produced when something presses or pushes against something else, or the burden of physical or mental distress. And then of course there's hunting pressure, the impact that hunter activity has on local deer movements. And in states like Michigan with nearly a million hunters, hunting pressure is astronomically high, and it makes the hunting, especially for mature bucks, very, very difficult. As you might imagine, this adds a whole lot of the other kind of pressure to a hunting season. Still though, if you work hard enough, success can be had. This season, my friends Andy Bradley and Dustin Hodgkin prove this to be true. See, no horns. It's got a baby with it though. It's standing behind it. See the baby behind it? Today is September 22nd. We've got about nine days till uh, the opener. Oh, I got everything done, man. I'm ready to go. Kind of twiddle my thumbs for another nine days, so I uh, can't get here fast enough. Hey, you gonna be a deer hunter? Yeah. What kind of deer are you gonna shoot? Um. Cow. Well, I'm set up on the edge of this uh, this swamp. It's to my right here, and. Uh, just to the left of the camera is where that big buck has been crossing through. Um, he's been feeding up into this little stand of oak trees right here. Um, and then he kind of just makes his way into the woods further. I really, really hope my instincts and my gut aren't just playing with me because I really feel good about this. Those came out first. I got a dog checking me out pretty hard right now. If I hadn't spotted that buck earlier this week, I'd probably shoot that doe right there. I don't want to take a chance right now. Got another about. Maybe in 45 minutes of daylight. Right about now is when he came out, so I think I'm going to wait. Weather's awesome tonight, but doesn't seem to be a whole lot moving. Other than the family of people that walked right below my tree, scared three deer out from under it, came walking by. <laughs> it's just one of the things. That's a dandy buck right there. He looks like he's about 18 inches wide and all of a 10 point, if not a little bit, maybe maybe a 12, I don't know. But uh, I'm pretty excited about that buck right there. Brand new place to hunt two weeks ago. Yes. So pumped right now. I saw that 
big buck. Whole family of people walk through the woods, so I'm not gonna get too down about it. At this point, if he could just get lucky, it would be great. He's not gonna give up until he's satisfied that he's not gonna find it, so good luck to him. Here comes that big 10 pointer. I think it's him. I just pinwheeled us big. I just shot a dandy of a buck. He'd been doing just what I thought he was. I'd been waiting like three weeks to sit here. sight of him in the brush but um, I'm gonna get down and get my arrow real quiet but I'm gonna sneak out of here yeah baby so we're headed out right now to look for the buck I shot last night um, I thought I put a really good shot on him I was just so excited when I climbed down the arrow had a little bit of smell a little bit like maybe stomach on it so I was a little bit afraid that maybe I got into the guts and so I gave him at this point 16 17 hours to lay and uh, we're gonna go look for him right now I got the dog and and I'm hoping that that he just walked over there laid down and died hopefully I got a bunch of his liver when I was going through on that angle and and that's it so I'm so nervous right now though I can't hardly stand it so here goes nothing. This part was a little bit weird, but I'm almost 90% sure that this was. A little more right where she's looking. Yeah. Handy. Get over here, Andy. <laughs> let it go, man. After I let it go, because I thought that's exactly where it hit. He must have had his front leg forward or something. Look at that. You pin? Dude. Pinwheeled him. He's literally, that's an inch from. Dude, that is a stud. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I was getting pretty low. Uh, I, I can imagine. You know what, when you said, we got some blood over here, I thought, and I hope they're messing with me. And then you know what? I said, I said, yeah, and you didn't say anything back. And I'm like, and in my mind, I'm thinking, if they just found some blood and they want me to come back over there, they say, maybe they're talking about getting the camera ready or something. I was wondering about you guys. <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, man. What do you think? How old is he? Look how, you got a ton of character. Look at the little sticker trying to come off right there. They're all plated right there. Both of them. 
Oh, he was one year from a drop tie and I should have let him go. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he is. He came in last night like 25 yards. I got him on film for a minute. It's almost more relief than it is excitement. You're just... I thought he was a 10 point, so the even better news is that there's a 10 point that's at least this big out here that I have on trail camera, so if they don't leave the country from all this activity, then maybe I'll have a crack at him next year or maybe later this year. I just... My friend Dustin Hodgkin helped on that successful track job with Andy, and soon, karma came back around his way. But as most of us do in Michigan, he had to battle through a lot of adversity to get there. Well, it's October 1st. I got a seven point on trail camera. He came out of the pines and went across the field into the cornfield over there. And then right after, he went into the cornfield, six does and a little buck. Looked like a little four or five point. Come out across the field. Dove come right in about 16 yards. And I took a shot at her with the reeker, but she either ducked the arrow or I shot low. I can't tell on camera. I know I missed her, but I don't know where my arrow went. Boy, was that fun, though. I gotta take a few misses before I hit one, but I was shaking, shaking pretty good. Found uh, found my doe. Feels good to get get one under my belt this early in the year. Um, you can see the exit hole here. It was low, but she was quartering away at uh, 25 yards. So um, the entrance hole's perfect. I must have caught just the heart. No long, I'm guessing. I don't know. But, uh, where did she go? She went probably a good 150 yards. Great blood the whole time, but uh, the dog led us right to her. So we're gonna get her out of the woods and get out of here and let this place calm down for a while and come back in a week and do it again. It's about four o'clock. I'm trying to hurry. I just came over the hill. There's no deer in the field. Got my lone wolf tree stand on my back. This cornfield was fresh cut today. And uh, butts up to a really good swamp. This is my first time in here. So I'm gonna get up here, get set up, and get quiet. I'm running out of time, so hopefully it's a good night. Well, I had six does out in front of me about, they were about 40 yards. I didn't have a shot at all, but they were feeding out of the swamp just like I had planned when the landowner behind me, to the south of me, who last year told me I could hunt his property if I needed to. And like I said earlier, I don't want to do that because it causes problems. So I'm sitting on the line where I can shoot my field and that's it. I didn't trim any branches behind me, so I have no shots on his property, so nobody can argue that. Comes driving out here, scares all the deer off. He has people that lease his farm and I'm hunting too close to his land. For some reason, I'm not allowed to hunt my land because it's too close to his and he doesn't have much to hunt. It's, it's you know, it's, it's not my problem that I was fortunate enough to be born into a farming family and we have a lot of ground to hunt. And uh, I've, that's the second time I ran into that down here. Both these guys are great dudes, upstanding guys, they do anything for anybody, but something about freaking deer hunting that gets people all in a tizzy. Alright, well I'm going to try to get my blood pressure back down below stroke range and uh, try to enjoy the rest of this evening. cluster you know what getting in here and getting set up this morning I do run and gun sets all the time and I'm pretty confident in my ability to get out here and do it quietly and effectively but 
this morning if it could go wrong it went wrong getting my camera arm hooked up <clears throat> the two teeth that bite onto the tree it was dark and I didn't catch it my strap was higher than the base so it bent the top teeth that bite the tree I bent those down about an inch finally got up here <clears throat> had a little pep talk with myself in the tree and uh, talked myself into setting the camera up because five minutes before daylight I had it hanging in the tree and I said screw it I ain't filming today but I enjoy doing it and uh, it's worth it in the long run the sun's just starting to come up it looks like it's going to be a beautiful morning I just got to remember that I'm blessed to be able to be out here and do this and take the good with the bad. There's a buck. Meh. Holy crap, that was fast. I didn't have time to range him or anything. But the shot looked good, felt good. And he did not look, look like he was moving too good when he went off. When I lost sight of him, he was barely walking, so I didn't hear him go down or crash, but it's open over there, and there's a lot of, it's, he might have made it just into the swamp. Send a text out to Mark and Andy and uh, let the boys know. Hopefully, we got a BBD. I'm not going to rejoice yet. Nice time length. Alrighty, look what we found at the end of the blood trail. He only went, like I thought, by about 75, 80 yards maybe. He laid down right where I right where I stopped here and he was right where we found him. Nice, nice Michigan buck. I don't know, he's got real good time length. I'm tickled with him. It's a beautiful buck. Um, it's been four or five years since I've killed one with a bow and uh, feels great. So, happy to have him and uh, now we gotta get him out of here and get him to the truck. Hunting in high pressure states like Pennsylvania, New York, or Michigan is just plain tough. But every once in a while, when things magically come together, the satisfaction is overwhelming. And as Peter Marshall once said, when we long for life without difficulties, remind us that oaks grow strong in contrary winds and diamonds are made under pressure. Now this stuff smells really good. Take a whiff. No good. It's not so good.
needs to take this knee out and then you use it. Like that. I always forget you were alive back in the 80s when we had pheasants. <laughs> oh, the old man joke. <laughs> I love it. He's like five years younger than me. It's like he's from a different century or something. Like talk to myself out of it. Like this is gonna happen. You're fine. You've done this before. This is... And then like little fleeting moments would come in where I'd be like, oh god, like you're 12 again. Uh. With aluminum arrows and some old piece of crap. And there's a spike Both. in front of you. Exactly. <laughs>